up this morning and I fed the cows at, at daylight and it was, the sunrise was beautiful, man. It was red and it was just, it had me in awe. I was out there rolling out bales of hay and I just, I just started worshiping the Lord this morning. It was just, it kind of just, you get up that early and you, you take for granted the things that he's created that are right in front of us every day. But you get up there, you get out there that early, you see the sunrise like that and it just, it makes you just in awe how great and powerful God is. So the God that created that is the God we're singing to and worshiping this morning. Yeah. You know, the, the God that created that is the God we are, is, is the God that's living on the inside of us. <laughs> you know, nothing is too big for our God. Amen? God is good. Yeah. God is good.
trials and tribulations but he is he, he, but he's led us the entire way yes. he's a good good father amen yes. that's what he is he's the good shepherd and the good shepherd never leaves his sheep the bible says he would leave the 99 to go find the one that's the that's the god we serve this morning He's a loving God. He's a compassionate God. He's not some God sitting up on a, up on a throne that is domineering and, and, uh, and controlling. He's a loving and passionate God. He has, he has love. He's he has love. He just, he just love. <laughs> He's just love. Just like, how, just like how Jesus, when he was preaching to the people, he told them to bring the children. That's how, I imagine that's how God is. Us. He just he wants us there in his arms. He's a good, good father. Has he been good to you this week? Yeah. 
are doing Bible study Wednesday night, so come on out expecting and uh, I'm seeing like I'm forgetting some of What about Saturday morning prayer? I guess we have we discussed that or are we because I'm not going to be here next week, and my wife's not going to be here next week. We're going to uh, Texas, going to a Todd White conference, uh, and uh, we're going to. It's going to be good for us. We're going to be ministered to, and, and we'll come back and be a blessing to the body of Christ and be a blessing to the town. My buddy's going with me, Adam. Uh, man, we've been having, wow. We haven't been having a good time in prayer on Saturday mornings. I mean, come here, Adam. Sometimes, come here, come on, buddy. Sometimes we, you know, you you guys hear me say that. And, but, hear it from somebody else. Give them a tidbit of what you've been experiencing since you, you had to come over here. Or, or Robbie, you have to forgive me. There you go. Tell, just share with them, man. I mean, I know I called you on the spot. Thanks for bringing me up. Yeah. <laughs> um, be ready in season and out. It's, <laughs> uh, it's been really good. Uh, you know, God's God's brought a lot of things to, to my attention and a lot of times and for men. For me especially, I won't speak for everybody, but it's pride sometimes. And uh, we're afraid to look a certain way or afraid to act a certain way. And uh, the biggest transformation that God's been doing in my heart is he's illustrated that the gospel is, you know, it's not to serve us, it's to transform us. And uh, I've looked at that wrongly um, for a lot of my life. And so coming to men's prayer and being around people that are like-minded, um, that are really in a, just a continuous state of surrender, and want to give it all to the Lord no matter what that costs, no matter what it looks like, um, when, when uh, you understand that that is the, the priority and where God wants our heart, and uh, we're, to be, we're to be good clay and to be um, you know, shapeable and not let any parts of our heart or our body uh, be in a, a hard place that are unfashionable for the Lord, but just to surrender it all. So he, he brings those places to our attention. He's taken us into a deeper walk, and he rewards those that fervently seek him. And that's what's been happening. So he's really grateful. Now, now that's, I got a question mouth. for Willie. It's <laughs> <laughs> out of the mouth. The Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. So I said, he said, and I'm sure brother will say it, and I'm sure Trent will say it. Trent skipped on us yesterday, but we forgive him. <laughs> Trent, we forgive you. <laughs> I love Trent, he's a good guy. Uh, but yeah, we've been having, uh, it's been yesterday, I mean, the presence of God was able so strong. Only thing you can do is bow down and get on your face. My brother, our Trent was on his, just out in the, on his back in the glory of God, just the peace of God. The girl was having visions, God giving him visions. Uh, just great things have been taking place. Right, Ty? Am I telling the truth? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating just because I'm the pastor's son-in-law. Um, I'm serious. We have been having a great time in prayer, experiencing God's presence and being changed. Like he was saying, we've been changed by being in his presence. You can't go in his presence and leave out the same way. It, it's, it's difficult because what will happen is he'll continue to he'll continue to tweak you as you're leaving. Like, okay, your, your heart is more sensitive to his presence. Your heart is more sensitive when you go out and you're at home with your wife and you say something short and she, you know, and the Spirit of God be like, okay, because you've been in His presence and He's changing your heart. That's the, that's the first thing I notice when I come out of the presence of God, just my love walk is elevated. I'm very sensitive to what I say to my wife. And if I say something, not meaning to say nothing short, I catch it. I catch it. Don't, am I right, babe? Do I, am I strong with you? You love it when I'm in the presence of God. She loves it. Hey, these women, you women, you should, you'll love it. You should let your man come. You'll love him. He'll look better. You think he look good now? He'll look better. You see Kevin looks muscular and all. Yeah, he'll look better. He'll look better. <laughs> How you doing, Kevin? I'm just messing with you. But I'm serious, though. Yeah, the, uh, bro, Lori, how's bro? Is he getting Wonderful. Yes. Because I'm of the presence even, of God. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, no. I can't. Yeah, so you wives, listen to these other wives talking. Listen to Lori. Lori, how's Trent Kent? That's Trent. I ain't gonna ask uh, how Kent is. Trent. Trent, Trent, you can't. <laughs> but 
but these men, uh, yes. I guarantee you, their wives will give a thumbs up uh, to what's happening to their husbands. Right. If they're paying attention. If they're paying attention, they'll see it. Can't help but see it. Because the love of God is on these men, and God is doing the work in them. And it's, I'm just, it's so awesome to, to see that happening in their lives. I was, I remember Adam when I first met him. I remember Verla when I first met him. And wow, what God has done in their lives. Just, how long is it, a year? How long has it been? Two years. Two years. Wow. Since I've known Verla. Verla's a good brother. But uh, God is doing a work in Verla's life and all of us men who have surrendered and submitted. And don't feel condemned if you can't make it. If you can't make it, that's cool. Uh, but if you can't make it because you want to get an extra two hours of sleep, come on. The presence of God will do, some, do something for you that sleep cannot do. Amen. You want to be refreshed? You think sleep gives you? Sometimes we go to sleep and we wake up feeling more tired. Get in the presence of God. You feel refreshed. We leave here. It's like you're on cloud nine. Seriously. Like, and my feet touching the ground when I leave here sometimes. So <laughs> come on out. Come on out on Saturday morning if you can. Uh, and if you can, like I said, don't feel condemned. God loves you. We love you, too. We're not going to hold it against you. Uh, this time, Brother Brother, want to help me? Uh, I like to call it investment time. Uh, I like to, the reason I call it investment time because we're investing in the kingdom of God. We are, uh, we are putting our money where our mouth is. We love God, we show it. We show it with seed. We plant seed into the kingdom, the word says, he who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Those, those who sow sparingly shall reap sparingly. So we don't do it because of obligation. We do it because of love, our love for him. And so uh, that's why I like to call it investment time because when we invest in the kingdom of God, we are literally saying, Father, hey, I love you. I believe in what you have put me a part of. And so I sow it to it. And as a result, we do. So, Father, we just thank you for our, thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for the ability to sow into the kingdom of God. Father, just a small way on our side to show you that we love you. Just a small way on our side to say thank you for bringing us into the body of Christ and equipping us for the work that's ahead for our lives. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And Father, as I present the word to you, to your children, to your people, Father God, I thank you that your spirit is on me. I thank you that, this, that, that the words that I'll speak will come straight from your heart. I thank you, Father God, that the people have receptive hearts, receptive, that they will receive the good word of God. And you shall minister to them in the areas of their lives where they need it most. In Jesus' name, amen. So I was thinking, like, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? And then Robbie's up here talking about how blessed he is and how <laughs> free from the curse he was. And I was like, because all along the last two weeks, guys have been talking to me about the blessing. And I was thinking, well, I think I'll go another way this morning. I could not get settled in me what I want, which direction he wanted me to go. My wife asked me last night. So what are you going to minister on this morning? I say, on my, in my head, I don't know. But uh, when I sat there on the drums and I heard Robbie talking, it's like confirmation. It's like, that's what you need to talk about this morning. And so we're going to talk about the blessing. And you guys, uh, you guys probably have heard about the blessing, right? Especially if you come to this church, I'm sure you've heard Dad teach you on the blessing. And so, but as I was reading... Uh, the last two weeks, uh, just reading the Bible uh, in Genesis and Exodus, something began to just stand out to me. I got to Abraham's life, which let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Verse, I'll start at verse 1. Now the Lord had to, you guys there? Let's get her pages moving. Now that's the first book of the Bible that you guys knew. Right? <laughs> Genesis 12, it says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, 
from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. Now here's the introduction of the blessing in Abraham's life. I will bless you and make your name great. God says he'll make his name great. And you shall be a blessing. That's the purpose of the blessing that's on our life. So that we can be a blessing. Not to just hold it back. Us four no more. Just for my family. No, the blessing is greater than you and your family. He says, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families. Say, I, say, say I'm the family. Say, I'm in the family. I'm in the family. Of the earth, of the earth. Shall, be blessed. shall be blessed. So that's talking about us, right? So let's see how this, this blessing looked in Abraham's life. So we see Abraham. I'm not going to go through all the scriptures. I'll just bottom I'll refer back to it. But we see Abraham and the introduction of the blessing upon his life. But before I can go further to Abraham's life, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Because I believe sometimes as people of God, we allow circumstances, we'll, we allow what our neighbor is experiencing, we're, we allow what we've heard somebody else say is experiencing, and we unconsciously accept that as truth for our life. And so you're going to see that the blessing will make you very different. The blessing of God does, may not look like what your neighbor's living in. The blessing of God may not look like what you currently are experiencing. And that's fine. But that's why we present truth because the, the truth of God's word will elevate us. And so if, if we're, while, we're, while we're going through this, you're like, man, I, I haven't seen that in my life before. That's good. That's a good place to start. Because now you're confronted with that truth and you're like, Lord, help me to walk in that. Because I guarantee you there's something on you that's greater than you have than, than what you currently are experiencing. And sometimes, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just go. Genesis. Okay. Let's look at verse 29. Genesis 1, 29. And God says, see, I have given you every herb that you have seen, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit you have seen, to you it shall be for food, also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green earth for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now when you have time, you can go back and read all of that. But what, I, what you see here is everything that God did, blessed, 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 blessed. So if you look at before the curse, Adam and Eve walked in the blessing. Do you agree with me on that? There was nothing missing in their lives. God created the whole planet with one person in mind, and it was Adam and Eve. And his descendants of Adam and Eve. That was God's whole, whole agenda for creating, creating the planet. But he created it in such a way that the only thing they had to do was receive it. That's all they had to do. It reminds me of when, when we had Asher and you guys that have had kids can relate to this. When, before that baby has, before, before the baby has come out of the mother's womb, when you know the first month that, you, that the woman is pregnant, guess what starts happening? You start preparing. You start planning. Little man, didn't, little man didn't do one thing right, anything, but you loved him immediately. You, you, you created an environment for him. That's what God, God was, God was like, man, they, they hadn't done one thing for God, but God was like an expectant parent. And he created this perfect environment. And in that environment, he's like, I don't want my kids to have to struggle I don't want them to lack anything, so I'm going to make sure everything is perfect for them. So when they come into the world, the only thing they have to do is receive my love. That's all they had to do. That was how the blessing looked. And so you fast forward into Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, 
that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves. See, look, look, what, look, what, look at what the curse did to man. Man began to take matters in his own hand. Man began to trust in his own instinct as a result of the fall of man. And so we see, and if I keep going, I'll let you guys do that, but as you keep going, you see what begins to happen as a result of the curse. And in Romans, talk, Paul talks about it this way. Through one man, the death came into the earth. One man, through Adam, that death came to the earth. And so from this point on, all the way up to Abraham, God is in a conundrum. He's in a dilemma. How can I get the blessing back into man's life? How can I get the blessing back into man's life? And so that's where you see Abraham coming into the picture. Abraham, God got the blessing back into Abraham's life through a covenant. Uh, that covenant God made with man is almost, it's, it's a relationship he made with man. Through that covenant, the blessing was back into the earth. So much so, if you fast forward, the Bible says that Abraham, whenever the situation Abraham was in, the blessing rose into the top. He was in one place, and uh, he told the king that my wife is my, my sister. And because he was scared of his life, scared for his life, he thought that they would come after him. And Abraham, as a result of doing that, the king, through a dream, realized that Abraham had lied to him. And the king said, Abraham, take your wife. But it's interesting what else the king did. The king gave him donkeys and sheep and all kinds of things. I mean, just think about it. He just lied to the man. The man found out that he lied to him, and the man blesses him. That, look at the blessing. I, I want to bring your minds up, bring you up to what the blessing looks like. And then you see in Isaac's life, his son, the blessing came onto Isaac's life. And the Bible says that Isaac, he sold in a time of famine in the land and reaped a hundredfold. When no one else was doing this, Isaac reaped a hundredfold. And as a result of that, they were envious of Isaac. The people around Isaac was envious of him and they wanted to kick him out of the land. So much so because Isaac's goods were greater than theirs. He had more stuff than them. And they were like, well, we can't have you living here with us. But look at the blessing. It's not because Isaac was Isaac. It wasn't because Abraham, it's because God put something on their lives. And I find it interesting, if you guys ever read the verse where uh, back in, it said in Genesis, the Lord said because of man's evil heart that he was cutting him down to 120 years. But what's very interesting about that is God spoke that, and we see Abraham living to 175. We see Sarah living to 127. Why is that? Because of the blessing. The blessing. And, and, and. This is something God had told me. You know, we sometimes, we hear that 120. And if you, I mean, I challenge you when they follow this out. You'll see, God said 120, but wait a minute, God. Why is Abraham living to 175? Okay, why is Isaac, why is Sarah lived to 127? Why did Isaac live to 100 and, I believe he lived to about 180 something? And Jacob, and jo Joseph lived to about one. Joseph didn't make quite 120. He lived in 110. But why is that? Even though God said that, why did they live so much longer? It's because the blessing was in their life. They were, they were, they were mindful of that which was on them. That which was on them was prolonged in their life. I like what Robert said. He says, I speak the blessing every day. One of the things I do, I do on a regular basis is I say to myself, Lord, I thank you that your blessing is on my eyes. My eyes don't have to grow dim. I thank you that your blessing is on my organs. I thank you that your, your, your blessing is on my bones and my limbs. I proclaim that. Why? Because that's what is on us. Sometimes we settle. We settle because, well, this is not happening for my neighbor. Or this isn't happening for my fellow brother and sister in Christ. 
Well, you don't know what they know. You don't know what they know. And never compare yourself among yourself. You look at the word and you compare yourself up against the word. And therefore you begin to claim, once I saw how the blessing operates on an individual's life, my mouth lined up with what God's word said versus what someone else has experienced. Basically, uh, no matter what I had experienced up to that point in my life, it didn't matter to me anymore. This says this, so therefore I'm going with this. Anything else is out the door. And so you, when you see the blessing prolonging these people's life, not just prolonging, taking them way past what God originally said earlier in the book. So the blessing will, will, will go against what you think. It really will. The Bible says God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So don't, don't get tied up or don't like, oh, God, the blessing. I'm not ex maybe I'm not experiencing that to its fullest extent. Well, you can. Faith comes by hearing. In order to operate in this blessing, you have to hear about it. You have to know these things. If you don't know it, you can't receive it. Just like when he created that garden. They, they, when, they, when, God, when Adam woke up, he saw all that which was around him. And Eve, when she, like, wow, we are blessed people. And let's not get it, we have to be careful about this, sometimes they talk about old street ways. But let's not get it twisted because, you know, let's look at Joseph for a minute. Go to, let's, let's find Joseph. Because I find it interesting about Joseph. We see Joseph, uh, chapter 39, Genesis 39, Genesis chapter 39, Genesis 39, I'm going to begin, it says, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. See, I'm going to say this right now because look at the conditions that Joseph is in. Doesn't So, look at that. You know, he's going down to Egypt as a slave. He has no material wealth whatsoever. I mean, from all intents, if you're looking at Joseph's life from the position of one of the Egyptians or from one of the, the Midianites who sold him to Potiphar, you were like, man, Joseph is messed up. He's, he's not coming out of this. There's no way out for him. But it goes to show you that, that your position or what you're experiencing, watch how the blessing rises this man up. Verse 2 says, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a, a successful man. Oh, you mean you can be successful in a situation like that? According to the Bible, you can. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. He made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. You see the, you see the blessing in action? You see the blessing. The blessing is in action. This man is sold into slavery. But because of the blessing, the blessing on his life, he began to flourish. He began to prosper. Everything the man touched to prosper. There was no broken down vehicles in Joseph. If there, if there were vehicles, there was no broken down. Anything that was under Joseph's care prospered. And it wasn't because Joseph was so smart. It wasn't because Joseph was the, the, the brightest guy in the group. It was because he was the most blessed guy in the group. And so this is what's on our life. The blessing. The blessing. But let's keep reading on because I find it interesting. 
It says, so verse 6, thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on him. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me. But you, because you are his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? I love that about Joseph. See, Joseph, see, there is one thing and one thing only that, hinder, that, that will hinder the blessing. And Joseph understood that. Joseph's like, I'm not touching the forbidden tree. That's not meant for me. That's not meant for me. I'm not going there. I am turning my back on that because I know if the day that I eat of it, I am going to experience the curse in my life. Joseph was a wise, wise man. Joseph understood. And so you see, because Joseph made decisions in line with the word of God, I'm not going to read the rest of the story. You know the end of the story. What happened to Joseph? Somebody tell me, what happened to Joseph? What happened to Joseph? Huh? He went to jail, and he prospered in the prison. And as a result of the blessing on his life, the blessing got the, got the, uh, the warden's attention, and he put him over the prison. Everywhere Joseph went, it's not based upon the environment. It's not based upon the situation. Those things don't matter. It don't matter what our current lot in life is right now. That stuff doesn't matter. What matters is do you understand what is on your life? What is on your life? The blessing is on my life. Say that with me. The blessing, the blessing. is on my life. It's on my life. So that means whatever my hands touch, it has to prosper. That means... That means that no matter what my current situation looks like, it has to change. It must change. He went in as a slave. Fast forward a few years later, I believe it was 14, 17 years later. Now he's the ruler over, over uh, Egypt, second in command to Pharaoh. Now, you see what the blessing causes men, what caused to happen to this man? The man just kept going up and up and up and up. No matter what they, what what life tried to put on him, no matter how much dirt life tried to bury him under, he just continued to rise, 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 rise. That's what the blessing will do for our life. The blessing will, will elevate us. The, the blessing will put you in a position if you learn, learn after Joseph. Joseph made a decision. I'm not going to speak against the word of God. I'm not going to act against the word of God. We see this in Joseph's life. Joseph made the decision, listen, Miss Pharaoh, I know you look pretty. I know you look nice. You smell good. But you know what? I'm not going to let you in my life to affect the blessing that's on my life. I'm not going to let you in my life. And, and one thing we have to do to, to uh, operate in the blessing Number one, you got to know about it. You have to know what's on you. Number two, you have to speak in line with it. You have to act in line with what you know the Word of God is telling you to do in your life. You know, the Lord checked me a while of, checked me on something a few weeks ago, I think it was. And it was in the area of prayer. And he said, I was I prayed for a certain person. Uh, and right after the prayer session, maybe a few days, a few hours later, uh, I began to call this situation, talk about the situation the way that it currently was. And he said, and he stopped me like, didn't you pray about that? Yeah, I did, Lord. So why are you talking against me? Why are you, why are you talking against what you prayed for? So if you're really believing, if you're praying for a certain thing, and you go against it later on, like you may have prayed for in the area of healing. You may have said, Lord, I thank you that I believe I received healing from my body. But then you go away from that after you said the amen, you begin to talk against it in this way like, oh man, oh I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just struggling, I'm just struggling. You see what you just did? You just dis 
disconnected yourself from your yeah. prayer. Yeah. You just disconnected. You just pulled the pull the plug on your prayer. And so when he told me, I was like, Lord, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. And so therefore now, this is one of my practices. If I pray for something or a person, what I say is, if somebody presents something like that to me, I say, you know, well, God's doing the work in their life. God's doing the work in their life. Why? Because that's what I prayed about. I should not be speaking against what I prayed about because I am disconnected myself from the power source. I am pulling, as I said yesterday in prayer, I'm pulling logs. I'm pulling logs. I look at my prayer as a big bonfire going up to heaven. But when I begin to speak against my prayer and I begin to speak the obvious, I begin to pull logs off the fire. I'm just pulling them off. And before long, that fire just gets smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where my prayers aren't even reaching heaven because I'm cursing my prayers by my words. And so I would encourage you if you want to see that blessing come to pass in your life, you want to operate in that blessing, you have to speak in line with the blessing. You have to act in line with the blessing. You see, all throughout the New Testament, there was a phrase that, that Jesus often said to people. He says, when he saw their faith. When he saw their faith. You see that multiple times you read the, uh, the four gospels. Well, what was he seeing? He was seeing what they believed. When God looks down, do, do he see? Do he see the blessing in your life? Do he see you speaking in line with that blessing? Do he, do he see you acting in line with that, that blessing? Or are you calling things the way that they are? Because that's what everybody does. That's not faith. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. In other words, I, one of my favorite scriptures of, as of late, 1 John 4, 17 says that as he is, so am I in this world. So as he is currently now, so if he's holy, I'm holy. If he's prosperous, I'm prosperous. If he's healthy, I'm healthy. If he's blessed, I'm blessed. As he is. But then your brain will tell you, well, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look like, well, who told you to go by what it looks like? The Bible doesn't teach us that. The Bible says, I don't care if yesterday I lost my temper, threw the dog out the house, kicked the cat in the mouth, guess what the Bible says I am? Righteous. Now, hopefully I will never do that. I don't even have a dog walking. But I'm righteous no matter what. I'm righteous no matter what. And, that, and people have a hard time wrapping their brain around that because they haven't associated themselves with as he is, so am I currently in this world. That, 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 that revelation alone will change everything. The more I see myself like him, the more I will begin to demonstrate that in my life. The more I see myself blessed, the more I will see that in my life. And I like this about Joseph, because I heard some of these, these, or these, heard some of these guys in the world, rappers and things of that nature. Oh, I want to give honor to God who has blessed me. Well, why do they say he's blessed? Because they made a lot of money. Just being real about it. They made a lot of money. Well, is money the greatest indicator of the blessing? Look at Joseph's life. Now, the blessing will cause that to come. The blessing will cause the wealth of the world to come. But money alone is not an indication of the blessing. And that's why so many Christians, so many Christians, they, they get caught up and looking at what they have currently and what they don't have currently. And so they begin to speak in line with what they don't have at the moment. They begin to, all oh, this old junk piece of vehicle, all oh, this, this house it, it is just a piece of junk. And, it, and we speak negative about the things where we should be speaking positive about. Let's go to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. chapter 3. Uh, bear with me. I'm just going to remark, start at verse 1 and I'll stop when <coughs> probably at verse 12. Maybe. I don't know. My brethren, let not 
many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment? For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in the word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. I'm going to stop right there because I used to read that and think like, my goodness, so this is, this is unattainable. But the Lord showed me this. He said that's for the unrenewed <coughs> mind, the individual who has not renewed their mind. This is to the individual who does not understand who they are in Christ. He's writing from that perspective because you as a believer should be able to control your tongue with the help of the Holy Spirit. So let's continue on. He said, verse 3, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small <coughs> rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even though the tongue is a little member, it boasts great things. See how great a forest and little fire kindles? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. That's not my tongue. That's not, that shouldn't be your tongue either. Because my tongue isn't, my tongue is not tied to my, my fallen nature. You see, what, what area are you speaking from? Are you speaking from that fallen nature? Or are you speaking from the nature of God? Are you speaking from that, the life of God that is on the inside of you? Are you speaking from the word of God? So if the word of God says that I am blessed, and there's a lot of scriptures, I don't have the time to go into all of them, but there's a lot of scriptures that talks about who you are and what you have right now, currently, in Christ Jesus. And so it continues on, he says that the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. My tongue's not set on fire by hell. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that's your hopefully that's your confession too. My tongue does not get his information from hell. Hell is not feeding my tongue. I am not controlled by my fallen nature, so therefore I am not speaking from that point, from that angle. So because I used to read this and like, man, this wow, this is it's like I said, this is unattainable, but he began to show me I have the Holy Spirit on the inside. I've renewed my mind. My tongue is not fueled. It, it, it doesn't give its information. I'm not allowing my flesh to feed my tongue. I'm not allowing the, the you can go to uh, Galatians, I believe it talks about the sins of the flesh. You know, it talks about anger and all that, wrath and things of that nature. I'm born again. I have the Spirit of God on the inside of me. It should be different for me. My speech should be different from my neighbor's speech. Unless my neighbor knows the things that I know and walk in them, my speech should be different from my co-workers. Why? Because of what I know, unless my co-workers know the things that I know. And so as a believer, we can control the things that we say. As a believer, we get God's word on what he has already said about us, and we begin to say, I am blessed. Everything that my hand touches prospers. I am a blessed man. I don't care if last week I busted something up. I am a blessed man. And the more we speak in line with the blessing, you begin to see the blessing manifest in your life. And one thing I've always, I hated this, and I never do it. My son turned two, and you'll hear people say, oh, terrible twos. No, terrific twos. I'm not cursing my son with that. I don't expect it. Even if he acts, <laughs> like you hear him now, <laughs> even if he's acting a certain way, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let my tongue be fueled by what somebody has called for, what they, what the world has been, oh, when they get to, they're terrible. Who says? Where do you find that in the Bible? No, the Bible says I can have what I say. The Bible says that whosoever, if I believe in my heart and I let it go out of my mouth, I am creating a future. I say over my son every night. Every single night, I don't miss a night. And I sit over Carson's when he when he's with us. I, I when I when I lay him down in bed, I put my hands on him, and I say, Lord, I thank you that they're blessed. I thank you that they're growing in your wisdom and in your stature and in favor with you and man. I say that every night, and I say for Ashley because he started saying this. Yeah, I guess he learned a new word. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. 
And I say, Father, I thank you that you haven't given up a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I say that every single night. Why do I say that? Because that's what I want to see in my kid's life. That's, I am creating their future before they make one decision about their future because of the word of God. So it says, for, for every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature, verse 7, of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poisons, not mine. Say that, not mine. Not mine. Because you're spirit filled. He's talking about people who are unrenewed in their mind, who are walking by their flesh. That is the truth for them. But because I'm born again, that's not my tongue. Uh, it is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, I'm going to say this. The Bible says this out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I like one translation said, out of the abundance of of the heart, the mouth leaks. Because whatever's in your heart, in abundance, it's coming out. It's coming out. So whatever you're feeding on, it's, it's going to tell on you. Because if, I'm, if somebody's around you long enough, it's going to leak out. If you got a lot of doubt and unbelief in you, it's going to leak out. If, you, if, you have, if you're, you're seeing a situation that you prayed for, and you come away from that prayer and you curse your, your, your prayer, guess what? It's because something's in your heart. It's something's in your heart. And so that's where you start with. You want the blessing to operate? Speak the blessing. Fill your heart with the scriptures that talk about who you are, how blessed you really are right now today, right now. Whether you have $5, whether you have 5000 whether you are sick, whether you are healed. Whether it doesn't matter, whether you got a strained relationship, whether you don't, it doesn't matter. Speak the blessing. Speak the blessing and you will have the blessing. And then it says, verse 9, with it, talking about the tongue, with it we bless our God and Father. And with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. You know what's interesting? It's out of the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. But what do you think that's doing to our lives when we talk like that? What do you think when we talk the curse? We're going to have more of the curse. You plant an apple seed, you're going to get apple. You're going to get apples. You plant curse seeds, you're going to get the curse. It's going to manifest in your life. But he says, blessing, out of that mouth Proceed blessing. He said, my brethren, this is what I like right here. These things ought not to be so. It is not supposed to be that way. That's what James is saying. It's not supposed to be that way. I made a commitment to God. I said, God, with your help, with your spirit's help, I want to be a full-time blesser. In other words, I just want, the only thing I want to come out of my mouth it's good things about people. I don't care how bad they behave. I just want to bless them with my words. So what that looks like is maybe they have done something, said, lie on me or any, something like that. I just say, Lord, I thank you that you're giving them life. Obviously, they don't know who they are in Christ. That's why they're acting that way. So, Father, touch their heart. Reveal your truth to them so that they can walk in who they are in Christ Jesus instead of Picking up the phone and talking back, telling everybody how bad they've been against me. Instead of, because really that's gossip. You know, that's gossip. We should be full-time blessers. But we ought to make a commitment to say, God, I want to be a full-time blesser. Only thing I want to come out of my mouth is the things that you, that you desire to see in my life. The things that you desire to be changed. The things that, that, that I want to be like you, Father. You know, the Father was intentional in Genesis when he created the heavens and the earth. He was very intentional with his words. He only spoke that when he, when he said, let there be light. He didn't say, he, 
you know, if that had been us, man, it's dark out here. <laughs> Ooh, it's pitch dark out here. No, God spoke what he wanted. He was intentional. He was intentional with his words. And I said, Father, I want to be intentional. I want to say things, and I want them to only be decorated, be clothed in the blessing. In the blessing. And so to operate in the blessing, first of all, you got to know it. you got to get it in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the more you speak the blessing into existence, the more you will see the blessing come into pass in your life. And so I, I just, when he showed me this, and, and, and sometimes when God will show you truth, you're not currently at that level. That's why he showed it to you, to bring you up. You know, dad's been teaching from glory to glory. Well, what does that mean? God wants you to continue to advance. To, your, your Christian walk should continue to go up, 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 up. From glory to glory into glory. That's, that's God's purpose. That's God's perfect plan for our life. And so Galatians 3, I believe, it says, let me show you this one, and I think I'll be done. Let's let me go and give you something else. But Galatians 3, we all know this verse. All right, for, uh, it says, uh, verse 11. Uh, let's start at verse 10. It says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things. I read the pages. Galatians 3, 10. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 is where I read that. So, uh, Verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith. But the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. I love that verse. Curse of Christ has redeemed it. Christ has done it. Christ has set us free from that curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. See, he took the curse. That the blessing, whose blessing? Whose blessing? Where did it start? Who, who name he use in this verse? The blessing of who? So, I would encourage you. He says, the blessing of Abraham. Go back and look at Abraham's life. I, I would encourage you to do that. And you'll be amazed. You'll look like, oh my God. So you mean that which took place in his life is supposed to be happening in my life? Where you see silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and donkeys and cattle all this stuff being added to, the, added to this man's life, like, okay, that's supposed to, that's what's on me? When my enemies come against me? Abraham only had 300 and something men. He went to war with 300, I want to say 320, somewhere in there, against about five kings and their armies and succeeded. That's the blessing on that. <coughs> there was nothing that could overtake Abraham and his son Isaac, and his son Jacob, and his son Joseph. And if you keep going on throughout the Old Testament, you'll see times when they lived high on the hog, as we say. That everything was working out for them. And then you'll see times when Israel was being enslaved, they were being they're tortured, their women were being taken from them, their kids were being killed, they were, they were in famish, famine times, they were eating each other, eating donkey heads, I mean, you see these things. Well, why did that happen? Because they were living, they were making decisions in line with the curse. And the curse was taking place in their life. But then you'll find someone, even through all of that, who would, who would uh, come back to the Lord. I, I'm reminded of uh, 
when they brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel, there was a gentleman who reached out and touched it, and he died. And so this one guy, he knew protocol. He knew how to handle the Ark, took it into his house. And everything that man, when that Ark was in his house, the presence of God was in the house, everything flourished for that man. So much so, David was like, I got to have that. We got to bring that to Israel. Because everything was going right for that man in his house. Everything. And so that's what's on our life. That's what's on our life. And so it says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's what's on our life. Go back and study Abraham's life when you get time. And study Isaac's life. And study... Study all, just follow the blessing. I would check, follow the blessing. And that blessing will lead you up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was a blessed man. If you don't think he was, look at his life. He was blessed. I, I'm going to hear with this verse in Deuteronomy 28. I love this verse. It, 28, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1. It says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently, that's the key word, obey. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Talking about Israel. Talking about the nation of Israel. This was, this was supposed to be their destiny. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey there that word again, obey, 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 because you obey, obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. I'm glad you said that because I'm in the country. <laughs> he said, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground. So your children will be blessed. The produce of your ground and the increase of your herd, herd herds the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses that's your bank accounts and in all to which you set your hand. That's why we see, that's why we see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. This, this is what, why this was happening in his life, because he obeyed. He obeyed the word of the Lord. And, and, and one of the biggest disruptors of our walk with the Lord is our love walk, how we treat one another. Because really, when you think about it, the only commandment the Lord Jesus gave us is to love. I love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Everything hang, all the commandments hang on the coat rack of love. You, did that coat rack fall down? You, you literally broke all the commandments. So as a new covenant believer, the law of love is what he wants us to abide by. And he says, uh, continue, he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments, there you go again. It's conditional. It's not automatic. If you keep, if you, if you, say, if I, if I keep the commandments of the Lord, the my, God, my God, and walk in his ways. Walk in his ways. That's it. That's how you get the blessing. You speak in line with it. You act in line with it. And as you do that, things will begin to change. Things will begin to adjust. Those difficult situations that have been difficult, they will begin to change. They, that, that, that financial problem, it will, it, you'll be amazed at how fast that change, how you get, sometimes you go overlook how God does things. God may, if you're working for someone, I mean, hey, we got some uh, overtime. You want to work some overtime? I never turned down overtime when I don't need money. Yes, I'm the man, Lord. Send me. You know, how God blesses us, he's, you're supposed to prosper. 
He says, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandment of the Lord your God and walk in his way. Then all the people of the earth shall see. See, they're supposed to see something. The people that, that live around you, the people that you interact with, they're supposed to see something. They're supposed to see something. They'll see that you're called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the, the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not walk. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you, here we go again, the condition, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you to do, and I'm careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve you. And you can read the other part later because it talks about the curse. And the curse is ugly. The curse was ugly. And you see Israel living the curse out as a result of them not carefully heeding the voice of the Lord, obeying the word of God that opened the door to the curse. And some Christians will say, well, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. Yes, we are. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. But you can do things unintentionally to bring it in your life by your words. You can do things unintentionally by not obeying God's word. If, if the Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church, well, husbands, if we don't do that, there's a verse Peter said, it said it will hinder your prayers. It will hinder your prayers. It says, wives, respect your husbands. Well, if the wives don't do that, well, what, what are you doing? You are disrupting that blessing on your life. When I was a kid, my mom would always have me go to the TV, and they, I don't know what they called it, they called it Snow Like Beer One, or exactly on the channel, and you turn that little dial on there to get the picture to come in clearer, so you would turn, turn, and so when you're, you're disrupting, it's not, a, it's not clear in your life, because you're disrupting the blessing. You're disrupting the blessing, so let's just stand. And, uh, let's just make this confession. Father, I hearken unto your words. I walk in all your ways. Because of that, I am a candidate for the blessing to operate in my life. For the blessing to operate in my hands. For the blessing to operate in my finances. In my relationships, in my relationships, in my body, in my body, I thank you for your blessing. Thank you. There's no one that can stop that. There's no one can stop that. There's no devil in hell that can hinder that. There's no devil in hell that can hinder that. I'm the only one. I'm the only one that controls that. That controls that. And today, I make a commitment. I make a commitment to be a blessing. Be with my words, with my words, I will bless everything. I will bless everything that I speak to. That I speak to. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you believe it, say Amen. 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 And, uh, you guys come back next Sunday. You guys have a blessed week. Uh, we'll see some of you guys on Wednesday. Shake hands with somebody. If you don't, if you haven't met them before, introduce yourself. And uh, you guys have a good evening. Kevin. 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 Kevin.